it's Maladrum from Today in Gaming, and in the last tutorial, I showed you how to create a sword in Blender, technically. I ran through it with you, and now we're going to go through the texture editing through using UV mapping, which we did in the last tutorial as well, which is very important. So if you haven't seen that last tutorial, go ahead and go down in the description below, and you will find a link to that. Alright, so we have our sword here that we made in the last tutorial and we have it all unwrapped. So what we're going to do is start texture painting. Obviously, we need a texture for a sword in Skyrim. First we're going to need brushes which are, well, textures you're going to use for your weapon. What I did was I already did mine. So we have two here. I actually still need to import this one correctly. So first we have our first brush. So just go texture and then over here to this checker box and brush will show up. Go ahead and go down here and you'll find a picture of a folder and something poking out like a, a paper. Select that. Select your texture. Make sure it's seamless. Make sure you have a seamless texture for each part that of your weapon that you want to texture. I get my textures from textures.com and they're really good. So sign up, you get 15 free credits every day just just to download it. And no, this isn't obviously a sponsor, I'm just telling you where to go to get some textures. Um, so I got a free account. Really it's 15 textures per day and how many swords are you planning to make in one day for Skyrim, right? So, you can also get them on other sites and places, but that's my preferred place to go get some good textures, is textures.com. So I got my textures, now I need to add a, a, another brush, so I just hit plus, and that would bring up a copy of the last tag texture, but I'm going to change what the, the image is, the, the texture is. I selected a fabric look for my hilt. Um, it's going to look kind of weird given that would mean that would be the same for my uh, for this and this but I can probably change that in GIMP the color of that. So now that I have both textures I have my metal and I have my fabric. Let's do fabric the name and metal. Go back to fabric, click F to save it. Make sure you keep it in your Blender file so that you can use it later. And now. What I'm going to do is separate these a bit so that I can make sure I cover every part of the weapon when I'm texturing it. And then I'll put it back together. So, select it all. Now we are actually we're gonna go into texture paint now what happens is you see this everything becomes pink you see your UV image over here it's no it's no longer highlighted anything and over here it says missing data well what data are we missing well we're gonna go back to object mode and edit mode select, select it all and we're going to go over here into the UV image editor and hit new next to the picture of the image implying let's make a new image so this is going to be our defuse so I'm calling it defuse sky sword and down here gener generated type UV grid or color grid I believe is the one we want nope color grid is not the one we want so if that's not the one you want and you accidentally selected it go over here hit UV grid that's the one we want watch out all right, now go into texture paint and texture mode. Says you're still missing data, but we are not. All we need to do is go down to slots and the left toolbar here and click image. And the image we're editing is diffuse sky sword. So, so select diffuse sky sword. Don't accidentally edit your textures that wouldn't be good now we have this 
actually you can go back to a solid since we're in texture paint we can still see the textures go ahead and start painting what you're gonna do is I'm going to tell you this is your type of brush it affects how your brush is used this is the main main texture drawing and down here go to texture select which one you want to start first I'm going to start with the hilt and cross guard and bottom bit here up your radius and your opacity know that the resolution depends on the size of the image you're using Skyrim uses uh, it uses 1024 by 1024 usually and 512 by 512 and it can blow it up or make it smaller it has mit maps to establish resolutions for certain choices like ultra high quality or lower quality this texture actually I don't like it too much it actually looks more like stone but I think that's fine so never mind about a f more f fabric you look for the hilt guess we're having a kind of a stone sword here which goes against the name if you ask me sounds more heavy than a sky sword Don't worry about any areas you accidentally affect because we're going to restrict the selection to create the blade since we already are making everything here with this texture. Now this looks a bit fuzzy just because of the, how the texture was made. I might go in and t change the te texture to something else. I'm not sure. But don't worry. This is not generally blurry with any te texture. That's just the texture that was used and how close you are and how far you are change what it looks like so if I'm going really far out it looks really blurred and you definitely don't want that worse than so up close so make sure everything is textured to your liking make sure every b bit of it is covered in your mesh and your blender file so now we've finished the hilt bit now we're going to move on to the blade so let's go ahead and do that go down here select this and it will allow you to select certain parts of your mesh that you don't want to edit or do want to edit works just like the select tool Sele I'm selecting ones that I don't want just to make sure I'm only editing the blade don't want to mess up what we have add that in go ahead and use your metal texture on your sword looks like I've got some rusted centers there that looks kinda nice there we go so sometimes going far out can make it look even better you can see the scratches a little more the scratches that are on the texture again make sure your textures are seamless if you don't have that your textures will look really bad unless you edit edit it certainly that, that you use one texture only you don't drag it across and instead you paste it in GIMP it's kinda difficult to pull off so just go ahead and make seamless texture that's what's the easiest in my opinion so here's our sword so far kinda made that a little less and I'm gonna lower the opacity a bit just to add a bit more flare to it here not that wasn't the opacity I was confusing opacity is down below next to the lock button on the left two bar and 
not too worried about the bottom of the blade here since that will be covered with uh, by the cross guard but it's nice to just to be sure everything is textured so if you go to the right here you can see everything is textured everything is looking nice um, some parts kind of look odd and that's because of the curves on your sword so don't worry that shouldn't be a problem I can see one of those curves that's bad however I might want to fix that so select that all I'm going to use my fabric texture again go back over that as you can see I just healed that up by doing that so just go back and fix anything that looks pretty bad lower opacity helps lowering the opacity helps to make corrections so that you don't just cause problems elsewhere just move the problem to a different part of the mesh you don't want that you want to fix the problem get it all not looking nice so I have my sword here and I have my textures how am I going to edit these textures in GIMP and make normal maps in GIMP well we're going to need to save this image if you do not save this image before exiting blender you will lose it you will lose it so make sure you save it go down to image and select save as image I'm going to do diffuse skysword.png save as image and now that's saved and when you make any more edits on the textures it will pop up with a star telling you this hasn't been saved again so make sure you save it every time you edit your textures so now we have texture painted our sword this tutorial was a little shorter than the last one which is good the last one I felt like was quite long but hopefully you have learned along the way go ahead and go back into object mode and bring these back in like so and there's our sword user reference looks pretty good our hand should well grip around the hilt and our cross guards should match pretty well there also in the last tutorial the cross guard and bit below the hilt were a little darker that's because the normals were flipped incorrectly sometimes that can happen when you're duplicating things when that happens just select that whole part of the mesh and use control in and it will flip the normals and it'll look better again if you do not fix that then it will not show up in NIFScope that part of the mesh and it will look horrible in Skyrim it won't look put together you're just holding a sword that's disconnected just kind of a floating blade and then you're holding a hilt if we didn't have those there so the cross guard would be gone and this would be gone so make sure you fix that if that happens to you and that will look appear darker if you do that sometimes however if you add a material it will cover that up so make sure you know to flip the normals before you add a material or make sure you know what normal still would need to be flipped after you add a material etc etc so thank you for watching this tutorial hopefully again you learned something I am so happy I keep getting good feedback on these tutorials so Hopefully things will just keep getting better along the way. And join me next time for a tutorial in environment mapping, normal mapping, and glow mapping. See you next time.